get started. Yes. So, uh, for our group, we did what are the courses that drive infighting in marginalized communities. I'm Eric Rowe. I'm Sage. I'm Cassandra. And our group thesis is um, if intergroup violence and aggression are largely motivated by external and internal prejudice. We have our group definitions. The first one is colonialism, and it's when one country creates an empire by enforcing a dominating, by dominating a culture upon that already claimed territory. We have colonial mentality. It's a typical questionnaire where they ask if anyone has any mentality as to where colonialism has affected their mentality. There's colorism, which is a form of discrimination against skin color, which favors light skin over darker skin. And there's the golden stool, which is the royal throne of the Ashanti kingdom, and it's the sovereignty of the Ashanti. We have a uh, gender identity, which is basically a person's internal feelings of being um, a man, a woman, both or neither, um, i.e. like transgender or gender fluid. We have gender nonconformity or nonconforming, which is um, basically somebody's inability to not be, to not identify as like strictly male or female. Um, we have transgender, which is denoting or relating to a person whose sense of personal identity and gender does not correspond with their birth sex, but rather the opposite. Um, internalized misogyny, which is unconscious pre prejudice against women. And then uh, heteronormativity, which is a system that works to normalize behaviors and societal uh, expectations that are tied to the presumption of heterosexuality and an inheritance to a strict gender binary. Uh, for femininity, it's a set of qualities or attributes created by culture and society associated with being characteristic of women and womanhood. Um, gatekeeping. Yeah, gatekeeping is the act of preventing certain people from gaining access to resources in the community based on specific and largely uh, subjective criteria. Uh, uh, prejudice, preference towards certain traits considered normal and desirable, and active hatred and in opposition to traits deemed abnormal and undesirable. Same gender attracted is someone who, regardless of gender, is attracted to somebody who is the same gender as them, i.e. a woman who likes women, a man who likes men, a non-binary person who likes non-binary people. Uh, sex is the sex that you are assigned at birth. Uh, and sexual orientation is the sexual and or romantic feelings of people from the same gender, a different gender, or more than one gender. So for my topic, I looked at um, how gender and sexual orientation affect each other and why, in this case, I don't believe that they do. Um, so for my thesis, I did, contrary to social norms, sexual orientation does not automatically determine your gender and basically I used it based off of um, several studies including um, how study which basically from that study I found that society will automatically try to make your gender align with your sexual orientation when it actually doesn't have to um, this can be this can mean a range of things so like say a person is coming out as gay but their parent doesn't really understand what that means. So they're trying to, so by trying to understand where they're coming from, they're kind of like, you know, asking them do they want to transition and things like that because they don't really understand what it means for somebody to be gay. Um, I also looked at a book uh, by Sandra S. Sammons and basically from that book I found that um, what you identify as um, doesn't mean you're going to like someone of the same or different identity. Um, and the book basically looked at um, how a transgender individual can like, um, or basically how a transgender uh, individual can be gay, they can be straight, they can be lesbian, anything that they want is based on them. Um, and then finally I found that um, I kind of focused on how gender is identified, uh, how gender identity affects the individual and others. Um, how you can identify as one gender and how sexual orientation doesn't really correspond with any of those things. Um, and my
my reasoning behind it was I really wanted to emphasize the importance of gender and sexuality by kind of like clearing up some of the confusion behind um, what's causing the infighting within the um, community. And this is just my, com my conclusion was basically um, when people make inaccurate assumptions that gender and sexual orientation affect each other, it causes infighting within the LGBT community. I talk about how the LGBT community is demeaning and less inclusive towards the femininity of queer people due to internalized misogyny and social heteronormative ideals that leads to the upholding of the masculine presentation within them. Um, so internalized misogyny um, fuels the standards of an appealing feminine body through heteronormative and misogynistic ideals, which in turn affects how non-LGBT people and LGBT people, women present themselves. So, in, um, in um, society, particularly in um, standards, the ideal woman is 5'8", um, and between um, 108 and 125 pounds, but the average woman is 5'4", and around 152 pounds. As you can see, that is not realistic at all, and it also caters to how a cisgender heterosexual man would find attractive in a woman which affects how they are perceived by society and how they present themselves in turn. Because um, historically, um, when radical feminism came about during the 1970s and the 1980s, um, it declared a feminine appearance to be catering towards a male fantasy, which led to the feminine presenting lesbian identity being rejected in LGBT communities through being too heteronormative. And, um, this later corresponds to how um, they've been excluded. And also, um, social heteronormativity continues to reinforce femphobia created in society. See, uh, see where a feminine presentation can lead to LGBT people to question LGBT validity and feeds into the normative, heteronormative gender script that harms both LGBT and non LGBT. Um. Okay, so mine is fear promoted by a history of violence and oppression invites gatekeeping and reinforces heteronormative ideals within a large number of same gender attractive communities. As a result, this leaves those attracted by intergroup aggression and hostility feeling ostracized alone and without a community or support structure. Uh, gatekeeping behaviors in same gender attractive communities often take the following forms the notion of straight passing privilege which is the concept that appearing visibly straight both in physical appearance and in their partner's perceived gender identity gives members of the LGBT community some of the same privileges as straight people. Uh, femme erasure, which is the de facto invisibility of femme presenting people and feminine characteristics. Naturally, this is directly related to the notion of straight passing privilege. And the concept of gold star gay people, which is uh, the notion that if you, you're only, valid as a gay person if you have only experienced attraction to people of your same gender and you've never even like had sex or had interaction with somebody of the opposite gender too. Okay. Uh, so why do we gatekeep? We gatekeep out of fear that somebody is going to come into our group and dismantle it from the inside uh, and we gatekeep out of internalized prejudice for ourselves. What society has taught us that we need to think about people like us. And that comes out in our behavior and interactions with each other. And self-preservation, which comes from the idea that the tribe is an extension of the self. In this case, the LGBT community is an extension of your own personal identity. And you need to protect it. You need to protect its purity. And you need to protect how it exists. So what needs to change? As a community, we need to help eliminate false standards, stop policing the presentation of others, and accept diversity within our own community. We need to evaluate our own fears and anxieties, our apprehensions, and our unconscious biases so as to eliminate bigotry and welcome new members into our community. In our current state, our fears are ripping our community apart, it seems, stitch by agonizing stitch. 
And as a larger society, we need to stop reinforcing heteronormative ideals and encouraging the destruction of communities by their own members. Derision and divisiveness is the very last thing that the world needs right now. Okay, so I talked about the bonus stone, the colonial objective. As you can see here, this is a bonus stone. It is crafted of pure gold, 18 inches high, 24 inches long, and 12 inches wide. It is kept under strict security. It's also a purpose of divinity. And in order for a ruler to be a legitimate ruler, he has to be laid over it, well, raised over it three times to prove that he is a leader. The Ashanti's risked all, even their lives, for this golden stool because of how divine and its sovereignty for the Ashanti people. And even the governor of the British, Sir Frederick Hodgson, came and asked them to give the golden stool over, demanded actually for the golden stool to be handed over to him to serve his authority over the Ashanti people. This is Nanaya Santoa. She was the queen mother of the Ashanti region. Her purpose or objective was selflessness, love, and peace, and less tribal clashes for her people. But after the British came, the mentality of the Ashantis changed since they wanted the golden stool to be handed over, which demeans a person and that due to philosophy that black people or African people were meant to be controlled or meant to be talked down to, to deny and demean them to hand over the golden stool or anything of their sovereignty. So this is an example of weakening the mind to dominate a person, control them, to change their foundation or layer that they have already for themselves so that they can see themselves in the eyes of the, oppress the oppressor. So they're oppressing themselves in the eyes of the oppressor. So through col colonial dominance, colorism has changed uh, as the mentality of African people's view of themselves and other people. So basically, I use the term looking glass, and looking glass self is basically a sociological term as where you envision yourself as other people would view yourself. So how other people view you is how you view yourself. And I also looked at research done by VCU students on the colonial mentality scale, and it's where you hold signs of colonial men colonialism on your mentality, whether a colonial and like envision has had an impact on your mentality and how you think. So this is where you'll basically have certain sentences as where you feel inferior due to your ethnic background or you do not like how you look because of your skin color. You would prefer to be lighter than darker. It's also a form of discrimination against yourself or other people of that color, which you do not favor. And it's also an example of colonial history where white skin was the epitome of beauty. It's that impact of colorism or colonialism on your mentality where it affects how you look at yourself and how you feel other people look at you. Time was 13, 18. That's not That's terrible. Not. We still went over it's it. Still, yeah. yeah so it's not it's as our, long it's as our first yes. time. Yes. And this team will be able to, to record one more. Um, they're going to have to because they went over. All right. So my questions for you are. Um, first one. Uh, this one is for Sage. What's an example of a compelling argument from one of your peers' individual reports that you decided to exclude, and why? Um, probably Nanasua's argument for colorism, because I believe that it was the only um, topic or claim, rather, that didn't really line up with anything that I was doing for my personal argument. Um, since I was focusing on like LGBT people and how you know um, they identify themselves as far as just gender and uh, sexuality versus you know like the color of their skin. So the claim, uh, the argument, the claim, the actual argument that she made that you left out. Yeah, like 
what, what argument was like from her, her research that was left of, out? Like colorism being like the cause of infighting within the community. Okay. Yeah. All right. Next question is for let's see. This one is for Nasawa. And the question I have for you is, in what is a way in which your team's resolution makes you think differently about your individual research? Okay, so mine is mainly on a colonial aspect. I never really looked into like uh, gender or LGBTQ community. So that aspect also helped me to actually broaden my topic and also, even if colorism doesn't really have anything to do with, you know, gender, it also helped me to look at different ways that in an internalized group, there may be other issues that have to do with another person, how they view themselves and their gender, how it may impact them as well. So the gender and femininity, as well as colonialism and colorism, is an effect on a person and how they view themselves and how they view other people. So it actually that whole surrounding actually helped me bring my paper to a conclusion and brought in this topic. Well. Thank you. All right, my next one is for Cassandra. What was the strongest counter argument to the solution or conclusions your team identified and why? Give me a counter argument to okay. your team solution <laughs> and, and explain why that's a strong counter argument. I'm going to admit up front, I don't think we have a strong appeal or set, like here's what we should do. I think we have individual ones, but I don't think we came together as a group. Uh, if I were to synthesize one right now, I would say, a strong counter argument would say, but isn't there a reason why we should keep others out and why we should try and protect our group? Isn't there a reason why this is happening? And if it's still happening, isn't there a reason why it's been working? Okay. Thank you. And then my last one is going to be for Eris. For Eris. <laughs> I'd like you to talk about the process of the team presentation. How did the content of your team presentation change and evolve as a result of group discussion? Okay. Thank you very much. Give him a hand. Woo. All right.